fun fact, IBM. Oh, yeah, I'm Tony Marchesano. Uh, thank IBM for uh, graciously giving us this space. Mike Glicky, Pablo Dubois, and Henry Chin. Pablo's here. Actually, Pablo's with us tonight. Oh, he? Uh, I'd like to give him a little thanks for coming thank in all this time. Pablo uh, uh, had to move. <laughs> If you're not on the announcement list, uh, you can uh, get announcements of all our meetings on the website. We meet every other week at the library, the Hackfest, and Python workshops. We're on Twitter. We have IRC channels. Join in uh, free node, my love. Do you have any Python uh, Hackfest announcements? Uh, Hackfest is uh, concentrating on Ruby. Okay, so that's uh, that's the next meeting. The next meeting will be uh, <laughs> 26. 26. <laughs> 26 of October. 6 o'clock at yeah. 66 Leroy Street, the uh, library in West Village. In the basement. <coughs> Where? Where we all go. <laughs> Any uh, announcements from? Yes. June the day, weekend is December 4th and 5th at Microsoft. And it's in from newbies to advanced technical learn about Joomla. And we'll actually have some tracks for business owners to come to learn about Joomla. So it might be a good place to maybe get some clients. Mm -hmm. And go to JoomlaDayNYC.com. <coughs> go in there and the early bird is $40 for one day, $70 for two. That covers your breakfast and your lunch. And some shirt picks like a thumb fly and a t-shirt. Whatever else you have to give money. Where is that going to be? That's going to be Microsoft, which is, um, Six down the block, Sixth Avenue, at Fifty Second Street, the Apps Building, and it's December fourth and fifth, and go to JoomlaDayNYC.com. JoomlaDayNYC.com. And we're looking for anyone who wants to give uh, talks. Okay. Any other analysis? Debbie and NYC is holding a workshop a week from now. It's in the Woolworth building near City Hall. And it's about what's in a package. So basically, what goes into a source package that makes it build, gives it all the information about how to do stuff. So it's sort of a follow-up to what the presentation was on last week, if you'd be interested. So for more information, see the announcement that was forward, forwarded to the Nightlog announce list, or search web for Debian NYC, find their page, go down to workshops, and find all the announcements and information there. Actually, if you want to come? A friend of mine bought a redirect for that. They just go to debian-nyc.org and it'll send them to the wiki. Ooh, cool. Okay. So debian-nyc.org and then with a dash. Yeah. With a dash. And then um, yeah, so if you want to come you should RSVP. There's still plenty of space. So that's the Woolworth building next Wednesday? Yes. Yes. November 3rd, there's a Drupal meetup. Um, just Google for Drupal NYC, and you'll find their uh, groups.drupal.org um, site with the information there. And you can
So for this talk, basically, I'm just going to explore this uh, overlap and um, see whether you know the uh, Linux community have uh, some conversations with Eclipse and maybe get some benefit from it. But before I go further, let me justify why I'm standing here speaking. So for the last 10 years, basically my professional um, career has been um, revolving around Eclipse. I was first an intern at OTI, the birthplace of Eclipse. Um, I was there actually when they opened for Eclipse, so that was very exciting. Um, I got my master's in a lab where um, a widely used Eclipse plugin, Mylan, was born. I don't know if you know that plugin, particular plugin, but it's one of the top ten third-party plugins of Eclipse most most used. It's uh, to help you organize program elements by tasks. I worked for IBM Research for five years, building programming tools in Eclipse. Various things like configuration management system, time management system, source code, static analysis. Since 2009, I've been pursuing a PhD degree in McGill, and my research area is programming tools. So you may say, okay, well, what do you research in programming tools? So if I were a chemist, I would be inventing chemicals and experimenting with chemicals. Then Eclipse plugin is kind of my chemical. I invent plugins, try to see what properties, how programmers use them, stuff like that. Okay, Linux. I am a proud Linux user. I own an Android, <laughs> HTC. <laughs> I have a Ubuntu desktop. And for those of you who noticed, I went Debian testing. No, this very laptop gave me a presentation. I'm sorry? We'll let you. <laughs> How dare I go do that? Okay. So, for the rest of this talk, I'm going to explore a few complaints that you could, a few complaints that I heard from the Linux community. Um, these are very major and valid complaints. So first, um, on the incompatibility, incompatibility of Eclipse and Linux, and second, Eclipse is a bloat. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, first issue on incompatibility is on licensing. Eclipse uses EPL, the Eclipse Public License, is a commercial friendly license. Basically, what it means is that you can use the Eclipse code in commercial products. And comparing to Linux kernel, the license used by Linux kernel, obviously a whole lot of GPL is to uh, avoid competition with uh, proprietary modified version of the kernel, which basically means and it requires that all the release and free versions of Linux kernel be free software. So this is definitely not commercial friendly, obviously. EPL does kindly ask people who use a quick code to contribute back, but you know. <laughs> kindly ask. In terms of software patterns, EPL it's friendly to test and order in the sense that if you use the code, um, you will not necessarily get the license from the patent associated with code, whereas GPL, quote unquote, is a form of software patent, obviously. Commercial organizations just afraid, so afraid of GPL, because of patentation. I work for IBM, so I can say that. From my own experience. So, I mean, the, these two lenses are totally incompatible, that's what I'm saying. So, free software community probably sees Eclipse as a free software enemy. Obviously, Linux kernel 
our three solver fires. Let's look at it at a more practical perspective. Yes, Eclipse fosters commercial products. Let's think a little. Linux does have a few um, incarnation in the hardware that is not so free in a sense. So think of TiVo and Android. You can't really modify and hack the Linux kernel in the TiVo. With the Android, the, I guess the cheaper and more popular phones uh, of, uh, on the Android is not really hackable. There are developer versions of, of the phone that would allow you to reinstall Linux, blah, 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 but it's much more expensive, right? And it's really not the norm. So what I'm just trying to say is that there are some incompatibility, but I guess this world, many times it just, it's hard to achieve totally free, in a sense. Okay, the second incompatibility is regarding the history of the two projects. Eclipse is, or was donated by IBM, big cooperation. Linux, obviously, was drafted by Linux. But Eclipse has gone very far since since then, since ten year, about ten years ago, where um, when it got first open source, many companies and individuals have contributed to Eclipse. So, out of um, all the committers of Eclipse, five hundred around five hundred, actually only one hundred of them are um, IBMers. Out of a million commits. Only like 25% of them are by IBMers. And out of 45 million lines of code of Eclipse, only 15 million lines of code were committed by IBMers. So you can see there's quite a lot of players other than IBM who have contributed to Eclipse. So it's not this big cooperation you know, trying to put open source software out. And on the other point, I don't know if people know that because it's now not um, owned by IBM, it's really governed by the Eclipse Foundation. IBM is a player in that, but um, theoretically it's governed by the Foundation. And because Eclipse is a free, open source, and extensible platform, it really fosters a rich academic community. And I, I'm one of I'm more a player in that community and I really can um, test. I would really put Eclipse together with Mac and BI in the sense of uh, it's free and most sort of extensible, but not with um, uh, proprietary software like Microsoft, Visual Studio and Apple Expo. So for researchers who are playing around and wanting to deploy the programming tools, Eclipse, it just makes such a big difference. They are able to do it. I mean, think about somebody who wants to deploy a programming tool. You don't even have a source code of Microsoft Visual Studio. How can you even, how can you, you can't even write your code extending Visual Studio, not mentioning deploying it. So thanks to Eclipse, it really, um, foster a rich uh, in the community. And as users, you get these really sophisticated, bloody edge programming tools from the academic community. The third complaint regarding incompatibility is that Eclipse is not designed for Linux development. This is very true. From the system in perspective, Linux packaging system is a system level. Eclipse has its own plugin system, which is not sort of compatible with the Linux one. And 
kind of a pain to install plug-in through your input system. Bring your system in. Makes your life much harder. When you think of Linux development, you think of C, Perl, Shell, maybe Python, Ruby. But when you think of Eclipse, what Eclipse support is really Java. So clearly there's incompatibility. But what I can tell you is that there have been some improvement. There's a project called Eclipse Linux Tool Project, which mainly makes use of um, CDT, the C Development uh, Toolkit. It's actually pretty robust um, by now. So basic on the CDT, it tries to provide tools for Linux developers. Also integrate with popular uh, native development tools like um, all the tools and stuff like that that Linux kernel developers uh, use. This project is also a fertile ground for Linux Eclipse collaboration surrounding issues on packaging Eclipse for Linux distribution. So because Eclipse is a whole sort of operating system itself, it's a totally different runtime. Building it from the source is very difficult. So there has been a collaboration from uh, Red Hat developers with the Eclipse guys to make it possible to build it from the source. This project also produces best practices and tools regarding packaging, as well as uh, providing source archives for their result, their work of uh, making, um, making it able to build some source for um, to build Eclipse. Okay, so so far, oh. I'm not sure. Is okay? Sure, sure. So, um, you know, as far as the integrations, distributions, my experience recently <laughs> with running one of those um, action clips is I had problems with some plugins, and then things didn't work, and I ended up going back to using the standalone clips rather than going to distribution to versionize using uh, mm -hmm. the action. And I'm wondering whether do you think that's a typical experience or atypical or I actually have my Eclipse running my own. I'm running my own copy of Eclipse as well. So. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't use the Debian testing packet? Well, I have to say I'm an atypical Eclipse user because I need the most current feature of Eclipse. Uh -huh. I built a programming tool on Eclipse, so I have an excuse. <laughs> but I totally hear your experience. I don't know how common it is. I would think that's kind of common. I can only speak for myself. By the way, if anybody has a question, just feel free to call me anytime. I'm curious while we're on the subject of packaging, Debian even has Eclipse in core because they don't like non free software. I believe they have Eclipse. I, I, I was using Eclipse. It, 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 it's in the standard thing, I'm pretty sure. And I think it's it's free software. But the it EPL is issue is raising the flag. May not flag. what? The EPL issue is raising the flag in my head. Well, what's the EPL? No, no, but the EPL is, is, is uh, really. Okay. I, I recently installed it, and I didn't do anything. Uh, I installed it via standard Debian package management system uh -huh. on Debian testing mm -hmm. on an IBM thing that was the one of the earlier ones line that you had. And I was then able to do Hello World. Um, I only succeeded because my friend Terry um, told me the syntax of Java. Um, <laughs> static, public, um, version 6.8, sun as modified by Solaris 46, latitude and longitude happened enough. So I was able to I was able to do Hello World. And it worked perfectly. Now I haven't run it since then. Place thumb. It was not your model, which would require place thumb, stick out tongue for DNA sample. <laughs> but you have to control the, the, the version. All right.
talk quite a bit about the incompatibilities. And um, let's move on to uh, blow <laughs> to the blow. And it seems like everybody's very excited to go off to this part of the top. <laughs> I'm not going to disappoint you. I'm going to experiment on memory music. I have a small project of China Gurgava files. I ran with, so I basically compared Eclipse, the Max, and the I, and you can see the numbers. One gig versus 200 mag versus 12 mag. And just for I'm not sure what we're comparing here. What is the 1 gig, 192, and 12? Um, it's the virtual memory. Uh, are you engaged? The resident size? The you engage your project under Eclipse, Close. and then under Emacs, and then under VI? Yes. Okay, got it. Okay. But uh -huh. I mean, Emacs, it's a little bit unfair comparison because Emacs loads all the 900 files. VI doesn't load the files. Eclipse didn't load the files. <laughs> <laughs> so, just for fun, I also tested on it, just empty. Just empty <laughs> clips. You <laughs> mind <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, let's see VI. I can't see VI. VI, is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 1.7 mag. Well, I, 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 I just like to point out that Ed is the standard editor. <laughs> <laughs> Ed. Ed. I'm sorry. Ed, Ed only takes 24 points on my time, it's 1,000. <laughs> Right? Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to take about 2K. <laughs> <laughs> a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> the VI you used is not used like Elvis or Tim. I'm sorry? What VI did you use? The one game with Debian. Yeah, it's Vim. It's Vim. Right. So if you use real VI, it would probably be much less. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> is it Canadian or XE? Yeah, I think that's right. Command line or Yeah, I, I, I'm not doing the scientific comparison, you know. Just for fun. But it may not be scientific, but it's convincing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's also proof that Emacs is the prime operating system. I'll Emacs. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Let's use the Swiss Army knife that's like this. I'm sorry? Eclipse is like the Swiss Army knife that's this big and not quite. It like 7 million tools. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Y
can I not talk about plugin architecture? <laughs> so I just put two slides here. Hopefully, we'll be too, it won't be too boring. So basically, Eclipse employs uh, plugins on top of the basic runtime. So I would just mention answering the question of, uh, in contrast to like application with hard-coded functionality, because of the plugin architecture, it's flexible, you can include new plugin, remove plugins, and so on. This mechanism, you can think of the plugin mechanism, you can think of it as um, using a contract. So a certain plugin provides functionality, uh, called extension point, and certain other plugins use this functionality called extension. And this contract sort of make it possible for lazy loading because you have a declaration of something that is separate from the implementation. So when you first start Eclipse, you see all these UI um, widgets. They are loaded according to the declaration, but the implementation is not being loaded. Unless you press the button. If you press the button of certain like the first time, it will load the classes associated with that plugin. Uh, I'm just showing you a picture, an example of a, a plugin providing functionality um, to another plugin. So these are the extension points that um, a plugin can use to make an extension. So I mean, it's not that important to understand the details. You know, can just think of it as a contract. In you know, object-oriented terms, it's kind of like interface. Not that hard to understand. Yeah, okay. And so now, I would like to empower you to hack Eclipse. It's such a goal, I know, but you know, you could make it better and tailor it for your own use or your organization, your organization's need. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of the talk. So just going through a very simple example, I just want to add a warning message to tell people not to print, use the color printer to print source code. Because you may print hundreds and hundreds of pages and you know, waste the coloring. So basically what I want to do is, when somebody press print, before the print dialog comes up, that shows you, you know, the printer, blah, blah, blah. I want to display the warning message. That's what I, I want to do. Are you only going to display that warning message to make select a color print? Yeah, OK. So we don't have that much time, so I'm not going to do that. And what happens the United States when we use the year? I'm sorry? I said, what happens we don't want to use the year? Never mind. <laughs> it's going to forget anyway. All uh, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just powerful, but uh, it's just powerful. Yeah. I'm Canadian. So. I had so much trouble with that in sixth grade because I came back from the middle of the top. It's the worst word right there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Canadian, who is Canadian here? Nobody? What part of Canada? Uh, Montreal? I have a friend in Vancouver. I grew up in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only here in Open here. Wow. Okay. So first task I need to do is to find where printing functionality is in Eclipse. Just did a Google search. And um, I just put the keyword Eclipse and printing. I don't know if people can see it so well. I put a uh, keyword Eclipse and printing and from the fifth uh, result uh, is or a package. I don't know if people know Java here so much. Okay, so a package is sort of like a directory. So it's saying this particular directory or .eclipse.swt of printing. And uh, when I click in red about this particular directory or package, it says basically that's where the print dialog, printer dialog is. In. A couple of functions over there. So this is great. Already found the code. 
Okay. So I don't know if people know that when you download Eclipse, actually it comes with all the source code. You just have to have a way to find it. <laughs> so what you do is, so okay, right now I'm trying to import that source code, that print, that ortho eclipse.svt, that printer, printing directory into my workspace. So workspace is basically the directory you are developing your coding. That's how it eclipse the terminology. So um, you go to this import dialog, which is like file, if you go to the file menu and import uh, entry. <coughs> go to a plugin development. Select this plugin and fragments. I know this is kind of like a blow on its own, but believe me, I will do it in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, I get this picture done. So Yes. Isn't it cool? <laughs> yep. Oh, you're doing it now. I had to put some on my Mac. Cool. You can prove that I'm not lying. Yes. I can see it from here. Okay. Actually, just out of curiosity, which version of Eclipse did you build this uh, presentation um, on? Because I'm running Galileo. I am a Halo. But, I mean, it's the same. Okay. Okay. So you press what? You press next. And then um, you're in the import plugin and fragments. Okay. So you can see on the top, it's basically uh, pointing to where you want to look at the source code. So I would just say the default, like the, target platform. the target platform. So that means you want to look at the source code that your Eclipse is running on. And then one thing that you need to do, like I think the default will import as binary projects, which means it doesn't come with source code, but I don't want that. I want a source code, so you can make okay. it projects with source folders. Okay, and you don't have projects. Well, I don't have projects from our repository, so, but that doesn't matter. I'm sorry? No, I don't have the uh, projects from our repository option on mine, but oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, you don't have that? I don't have that. Which? It's, so you're running. It's, it's a very it's flexible system. system. Yeah, well, uh, three point I think since I use Eclipse, there's an option. Hold on. Yeah. 352. Since Gallery. I use Eclipse, Eclipse 1.0 has the option. Wow. As I say, it's a very flexible system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's well, that probably said you have with source holders. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You will see, okay, I, I didn't make this screenshot, but you will see like thousands of plugins here, probably, right? On the left, you yes, see I like have. thousands of plugins. Oh, you are running 3.6. I'm running, I'm just running another one, so that's why. All right, I have those two. <laughs> you have those two, but I guess I'm saying initially, you don't put them in. It really has like thousands of plugins. But well, anyway, I type SWT. Yeah, yeah, I type SWT to narrow down. Mm -hmm. uh, because I know my package was already because I printing, so <laughs> I narrowed down. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, those. Packages are basically in these uh, plugins. I just add them. I press add, and then here are the things that will be imported. Okay. And then I press finish, and then boom, I have these projects in my workspace. So as you say, yes, I am using Eclipse to modify Eclipse. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, obviously this is not that serious a thing. Couldn't you screw up more of those classic clips while you're using it? No. That's why, so it's not like Emacs where you're changing itself. Okay. That's why there's a workspace notion. I import, I'm copying. So you're playing with this in the sandbox, the testing. Exactly. Sandbox. I'm playing it in the sandbox. Okay, so now I have the code in the sandbox, and um, I want to find that class, the printer dialog class. Um, I go to navigate open type. Okay. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, print dialog. Found it. Cool. Enter. Okay. And voila. Got it. So the class print dialog, the Java. And I mean, it's not that bad of a class. You can kind of look a little bit. Well, actually, 
actually, okay, the strategy I'm going to use to kind of find where exactly the print dialog is invoked is um, by running a debugger. So right now, I have a sandbox, and I want to um, run another instance of Eclipse. So running Eclipse on Eclipse, so that I can set some breakpoints to see what's going on. So to do that, to run that second instance of Eclipse, I go to um, this bug, or you can press that little bug uh, icon, or you can press run as well, run from the menu. And I think the debug configurations. Do you find it? Okay. And um, you will see this thing, this dialog, run configuration dialog. And what you want to do is create what they call launch configuration. So basically, it's like a script in you know, a Linux terminology. You just want to create a script so that you can run your second set of clips in the sandbox. So you will go here and create. The first icon, create a new launch configuration. Alright, got that. Cool. And then, yeah, press OK. Then you will have the second instance of Eclipse running. What's the relation between these two instances? The one runs under the other. The one, yes, the okay. one runs under your other. Oh, on top of the other. On top of whatever. That's always confusing, right? Are you doing okay? I need to do something off. I blew it up. And then you go to the second one and get some more work in front of the other one. Exactly. All right. I'm not. 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 i am not i am You just need to use a Mac. Wait, <laughs> yeah. yeah. right. can't be a Mac issue. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Job is a cross after the talk. Okay. But I guess people will appreciate if I don't debug you right now. Right? Yes, yeah, right. we'll do debugging later. Okay, cool. So, okay, so we are at the stage where we got a second instance of Eclipse running on top of the sandbox. What I want to do is to set a breakpoint. People are familiar with debuggers, right? Okay. So I just want I set a breakpoint to um, constructor of print dialogs so that I know when print dialog is created. So that I can see where print dialog is being called from. So that's what I'm doing. And um, okay, so so actually this screen is when I at the second instance of Eclipse, and I press print. Because I have the breakpoint, it stops here. And if you look at the stack trace, you can see, okay, this is print dialog constructor. And um, it's being called by compilation unit editor, blah, blah, blah. So I look at that, I click that, and it comes to here, and it's not showing. It's not showing the line I want to show. Uh, anyway, so this is where basically the editor. Um, so each particular editor has its own print functionality. If you print source code, it would make it like nice formatting, blah blah blah. If you print text, it would just you know be the basic thing. So this is like the text viewer, and um, this is the print function. This is a print function. This is what it gets called when you press print. And you can see, yeah, if you can read the code, it's like printer dot get printer list. This is to get okay, if there's no printer install, it with the same message. So this is exactly the right place. If this is before the print dialog comes up. And um, this is when I want to be, uh, display that warning message. Perfect. So I'm gonna add here to display the message. No. Okay. No, 
I think the condition push and read that. So it picks up the um the printer message obviously from language model, right? Because obviously yeah. it takes you a warning. You know, yeah, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> You're gonna get it for me. So okay, I was gonna add the code to that place. Um but okay. It's kind of a pain because that code I had, the text editor, is actually not part of the code I imported. So I have to go back and re import this code. It wasn't in my workspace. Where's the giant picture? Least three dimensional. So you can see the relations of all the images, running processes, instances, source That's code connections. That's a great idea. But you have to have that. If you have two images, because I can't tell sitting from here. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's a little bit, maybe I should have done a demo. <laughs> maybe it's here. Anyway. Oh, well. no, no, this oh, is yeah. It's a real thing. Okay, so we were at a point where okay, we found this text viewer class, which is the code that would get a call when I press the print um, object. But I don't have the code in my workspace, so now I've been imported. So I'm just going through the same procedure I did, like going to this import, going to the import of uh, plugins view, and I found, actually maybe I missed a step. So from the text viewer class, this class I had, you can see where, which plugin it came from. So it came from the JFace plugin, JFace of text, JFace slash text. So that's why I have here, I want to call it JFace text. This is where, this is a plugin that contains the text viewer class. And then I did the same thing of trying to find that class from the open type dialog. And as you can see, yeah, so I do have the JFace text uh, plugin. And I found the class, text viewer class. So, that I just went ahead and add my code. So I think that was, this code was the one that has the checking there was any printer installed. And then right after that, I want to say, you know, do not print a printer, do not print the color in the printer source code. So that's my message. I added. So now I did my change. Of course, I want to test it. So I just go through the same process, running the second instance of Eclipse in the sandbox. So I did that, and this is the second instance of Eclipse. So I press print, and voila, I get my warning message. This was the message I added to the code. Are you cancer? Looks good. That's like, well, looks good. the same thing, no? No, just asking to see, okay, see, before you print it, do you really want to use a color print? Yeah, my thought was also so this You would have for <laughs> longer. Well, yeah, Anna, don't <laughs> ask them. The, that's another question, and each question is a heavy cognitive load. I'm, on, well, I'm an old man, I couldn't even listen. But, but every user, it's a cognitive load yeah, of everybody. You don't ask them, you tell them. If you attempt to do this again, you'll be reported to the safety the That's a more complicated code. I like that. Or Aaron. Or Aaron, should say us. You could actually write, write to the... Um, with the Prince Controls, the Prince Control window would pop right off. And would like disable the thing. Yeah, would yeah, say or say, or well, say, okay, I, or I say don't want to be so much dictatorship. I just, okay, I warn you. <laughs> you still can uh, choose to print it. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't like Steve Jobs, but one thing he got right, he knows how to treat users. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Real well. Yeah, that's why I'm singing the iOS UI back to Lion. Sorry, just throw out all the stuff and use the listing package and link. I'm sorry. They love it. Listing package and link. This is beautiful. For my slide. For your no, for your printing source code. I, I didn't know the package. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And it's already marked. Oh. Mm -hmm. You can have one more slide. This is just the printer, <laughs> oh, printer dialog. Okay. After you hit OK. Yeah, after I hit OK, yeah. Is it a generic printing message? Yeah. Does it recognize a black and white printer? Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it doesn't do anything. I mean, you saw my code, right? Yeah, you can make it, but my code was just this. My code is just display message dialog open warning. You should say A. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. My grammar sucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's Wait, what should you modify it to say, please? Do not use oh, any color printer. Or, let's see, can you do that? Source code. Sure. Let's do it. Or print do not use code. any and make it capitals. Okay, my whole point is you can do whatever you want because it's just code. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the matrix too. Um, <laughs> so I mean my whole point is really okay, and power is kind of a weird word, but really it's just code, you can modify it however you want. Let's, let's and um yeah, don't tell my colleagues I tell you this way to hack the code because you're supposed to build, plug in, and extend. This is really hacking. Yeah, but that's the tradition of Eclipse. It used to be um, a, a small talk thing. Yeah, it was a small talk. Uh, so so there's not like two copies. There's one image that you can't look at, and you go in and you start cutting. <laughs> yeah, and pulling. Isn't that the beauty of small talk? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's... <laughs> Basically, what I have to say, um, yeah, the Linux Eclipse community, a lot of incompatibility, but I hope you are a little bit convinced that there are some maybe compatible points, something to learn from each other, whatever. And um, yes, Eclipse is a both, but <laughs> it's just code and you can change it. <laughs> and um, it has some nice features like enable multi platform. Um, for a portable application, so it is a nice platform in that sense. So, so, yeah. so if you're working back, did you load your actual Linux code that's running on the, on the um, laptop and hack that for the clips? And so I'm modifying that? So I have not done that. I never really hacked Linux, but supposedly it was a Linux tool project. That's the whole point. They have tools and this auto tool, that all these Linux tools are kind of integrated. The only way you feel to do it now is run a, v, run a VM inside a, a virtual machine inside the Linux thing, so you can run a test version of Linux, so the crash. Yeah, explosive. so I don't know the specifics, but supposedly you should be able to do that. Supposedly, there, I was talking about the Eclipse Tools project. There was some effort there to integrate a tool that Linux developer use. To, to be accessible in Eclipse. And actually, don't quote me on that, but I thought um, Linus has, was talking about having the Eclipse at the kernel development environment at some point. Like, I wasn't sure how it goes, but supposing they should be. Eclipse at the kernel? Eclipse at the kernel development environment. No, not the kernel. <laughs> The, the Android uses uh, launches an emulator and it's built. The Android developer environment it launches an emulator when you when you have under Eclipse. Yeah. Okay. Or top of Eclipse. Question here. The, uh, um, how far is it to cross compile? Can you just uh, so it's cross compiler? Cross compile. I really don't know the specific on that area. I don't know anybody knows. You can use the Eclipse and you can compile the MyCode and you can pass it on to that and what for the transaction. And it's why Android is a cost of Yeah. Oh, 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 that's really Yeah, then that's you can do it. Yeah. Actually, I have. So I have Android. I play with the. It's pretty close. Yeah. Eclipse does not include a compiler, correct? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes and no. The oh. question is. Does or does it include a compiler? I mean, my understanding is it interface with third. Uh, no. You can change a compiler every one, but I think it comes with something. Yeah. But, default. But, like that. No, no, but can it? Can it? Can I do a, a C program in Eclipse yes. and have it hook out to GCC and compile? You can do that for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's CDC. a CDC. 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 Yeah, there, there's some type of. If you, you, you can find the page to change it, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but your lecture's not over yet.
right? Um, no, it's pretty much over. No, no, no. Where's the long half hour section on detailed comparison of Emacs and Eclipse? I thought I did that. Oh, you were convinced. You told me been, you were convinced. I, I fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> The memory is not No, you said you were convinced. <laughs> no, I'm convinced they're different from size. <laughs> okay. They're but, they're, but seriously, Emacs has a big plug-in, system of plug-ins. Yeah. So, so, and the Emacs plug-ins, as was pointed out by a forgotten name of the fellow in Pennsylvania, he pointed out that the, this is like five or six years now, the Emacs plug-ins and Emacs is far more cross-platform than anything that was in Java in those days. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how does Emacs succeed so well at being cross-platform? You know, I'm really not an expert on Emacs. Right. right. Okay. And I hear you can probably find the answer like two seconds. You can find something on the web. No, but that no, no, but I'm thinking at a deeper level. Okay. okay. In other words, they they must be very similar. The component architecture to use a term of art or as is technically known optimized. commercial bullshit. I'm reading right, I'm right, I'm right, the sequence. Um, and, and they must be, you know, they must be directly, or perhaps not comparable, point for point. Anyway, I just... That's possible. Very likely. Uh, that was not a question. Okay, um, if there are no more questions, uh, well, there's one more. <laughs> okay, early in your talk, um, you talked about commercial friendly. Uh-huh. Um, I don't understand, I didn't want to interrupt the talk, but it seems to me that GNU GPL is very, and, and all the GNU licenses are very commercial friendly. And GPL I, is commercial friendly? Do you no, very much. Yeah, well, it may not have any, it doesn't have any special features for commercial activity, but commercial users are treated like everybody else, which right. is about the most friendly license you can have. Uh, preventing pr proprietary stuff from being in, from intruding into your product. So if you're a right. commercial user or a non-commercial user, you're guaranteed that any of the products you're using are going to have yeah, access to the perfect. source and you're going to be free to do whatever yeah. you want and to it's, be it's able to change It's not commercial only because it's not lucrative enough you can stop other people from developing and taking away from you. Yes, it's friendly to the commercial get setter. But if I'm developing and I give you the code, you yeah. can see the rights I do, so therefore my value is diminished greatly. I can't have a proprietary. If, if I'm a business, it's commercial. If I'm a business yeah. and I buy something, right. It's um, friendly for you. It's not for me to tell. Michael, I think it's something like the BSP. <laughs> That's what's meant. Actually, it's very similar to the Apache well, I, license. The Apache license. Okay, I don't know all the differences. Um, how much memory does space like, I think, uh, do you recommend? As much as possible. <laughs> 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 anyway, let, let me just let me finish succinctly. Okay. okay. One of the great advantages of free software is it, it's friendly in many yeah. ways. And there's an enormous commercial gain to commerce from using free software, right. which I think your presentation doesn't capture. Uh, because I, I mean, it, it, Commerce is enabled by using free software mm -hmm. that stops proprietary companies from interfering with commerce and expands greatly the possibilities of commerce. I understand what I'm saying. I guess with commercial friendly it more means that people can distribute the Eclipse code not as free and also it doesn't have so much software patent implications for the people who distribute code. That's a lot. Well, I, I think that those limitations are bad for commerce. But, but, but let's say that who's going to develop the applications? There's no money. Put, may I jump in here? No. Let me just give one. It's one data point. This is a big discussion with implicit theories of economics and economic activity. And the question, several terms in any of the any equations, any of these theories taken seriously. Okay, but let me give you a data point. We're ignoring all that. Um, Michael and I happen to know a little bit, he's an old friend of ours, a man who made a billion dollars off of something based on the GPL version 2 license. I don't know anybody who's made a billion dollars 
and I mean a billion dollars, I don't mean a hundred million, um, off of an Apache license that perhaps there exists such, and I just don't know them. But one man made a billion dollars off of a GPL for two business, Bob Young. So if one just says that you can't make money off of something that's GPL version 2, I say, well, you may be right. But I'd like to hear more discussion. I've heard so, that that will be too. I think that GPL be, version 2 is too. Yeah. I mean, I would say that, that the main point is, is that the business is sold based on restricted resources. And obviously, yeah. the GPL is not going to But it's based on the, the, the services and can we take one more question, everybody, or that's it? Okay, one more. Sorry, he, he has a hand. Small curiosity about the memory issues. Is it just that the is pre-allocating a ton of memory for itself? It's probably the heap size that they're out. That's what I said. I think it is pre-allocation. I really don't know the details. <laughs> Turn it off, and then the memory uses will drop to nothing instantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would definitely try that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.